Have you ever wondered if whales were able to walk? How would they look like and what's the science behind this theory? Well, my friends and I are here to talk all about it, from the theory itself to the actual clues and evidence behind it. So, we hope you benefit from this scientific journey. Why do whales have pelvises? Because a whale has a pelvis, you make the claim that it must be classified as a bird, reptile, mammal, or amphibian. Biologists confirm that whales are in fact mammals. To prove that, female whales have mammary glands that can produce milk, and whale embryos have hair tube features unique to mammals. Did you know whales have pelvises? A pelvis is a large bony structure near the base of the spine to which the hind limbs or legs are attached in humans and many other vertebrates. Fish don't have pelvises because they don't have legs. Mammals evolved on land. So, how could species that originated on land end up evolving into aquatic species? Sometime in the past, Ancestors of whales probably experienced an advantage from having a pelvis. In other words, they probably had hind legs. However, the existence of a vestigial pelvis is not an advantage for modern day whales. A vestigial structure is a type of homologial structure that has been greatly reduced by selection, meaning it's non-functional. All vertebrate embryos have fungal slits that develop into homologous structures with very different functions, including gills, ears, and the throat. The latest scientific literature suggests that these features are evidence of whales' ancestry as a species evolved. New features may be present alongside old features, features that do not provide an ad adaptive advantages to the species are eventually discarded. The field of evaluationary developmental biology, often referred to by biologists as Evo Devo, focuses on finding clues to an animal's past by analyzing its embryological development. Some anatomical similarities can be seen in embryos, but not in the adult organism, like dolphin embryos. Whales are related to some animal species, but not as closely as it is related to us humans. We share a common ancestor resulting in us having many similar bone structures. Both human arms and whale flippers are called homologous structures, meaning that these anatomical structures have a shared ancestor like I had previously mentioned. Whales possess modified mammalian limbs. This is one piece of evidence that supports the hypothesis that whales evolved from an ancient land mammal that gradually made its way back to the sea. Fossils provide a window through which to observe species of organisms that lived in the past. If whales evolved from land mammals, we should be able to find fossil evidence of animals with traits of both land animals and modern whales, from earliest to most recent. Pachycetus, Amblocetus, Rhodhocetus, Derudin, and modern whales. Scientists have used radiocarbon dating to verify that Pachycetus are indeed the oldest of these fossil species. Pachycetus involved first, then Ambulocetus, Rhodocetus, and Derudin. According to the fossil record, modern whales are relatives of today's hoofed mammals. Animals with hoofs are known as ungulates. Primitive whales share several traits with ancient ungulates. Modern ungulates include giraffes, hippos, cows, and horses. DNA provides clear and important evidence for the relatedness of organisms. Scientists can apply DNA analysis to determine the relatedness of an individual. The more similar the base sequences of DNA are, the closer the relationship. DNA Evidence for Evaluation DNA is one of the most powerful sources to scientists that could be used as evidence, which leads to evaluation. To summarize this, DNA is basically what helps you know what a person or an animal looks like and how they live. Let's take dinosaurs as an example. How else do you think those scientists predicted how they look like? By using DNA, of course. You see, DNA is the way of living, and without them, what is life? The Effects of Mutation 
Here's a question that will have the gears in your brain working. How exactly did these changes come to happen? One little change in the DNA produced in phenotype can change the whole DNA itself. Homotic genes in mutations in homotic genes. One important set of controlled genes is the homotic genes. During an embryo's development, homotic genes lay out the basic body plan. These master control genes determine which body parts grow in each region of the body. When you scroll over the different body parts of the fruit fly, you will see which genes encodes that particular trait. Hox genes are found in many species from flies to whales to humans. Once a hox gene is added to a fly, it changes the place of some of its body parts. You've seen the effect a hox gene can change a fly. Now it's time to see what it can do to another mammal. At first, the mouse is normal, with its regular forelimb. Once you add two hox genes, the structure changes completely. One group of homo homoetic genes is hox gene. They contain a common DNA sequence called homeobox, and they are linked together to the chromosome. One group of homoetic genes is hox genes. They contain a common DNA sequence called the homeobox, and they are linked together on the chromosome. Scientists have found evidence that whales carry mutation in the hox gene that control the pattern of digits in mammals. In fact, whales have a high number of nucleotide changes in these genes. Scientists have hypothesized that mutations in hox genes were evolved in evolution of paddle-shaped spherics of whales. Homotic gene mutation can produce differences in body shapes. In mammals, a homotic mutation could produce an arm that is shorter, longer or wider. Organisms can survive and reproduce with hom homotic gene mutation, making these mutations a possible means of evolutionary change. Putting it all together, the main type of evidence used to describe evolution is embryological data. Similarities in body structures, basically meaning homologous structures, the presence of vestigial structures, DNA comparisons and analysis of fossils. What conclusions did you draw at the end of the study? The ancient ancestors of whales were land animals that gradually evolved to live in the sea. What's one thing you found interesting about this video? What did you like? Do you have any questions and concerns? Drop a comment down below! I hope this journey made you realize that biology isn't just some boring class.